day 182451, <laughs> if I can read. Hi everyone, we're, uh, we're back with more Herald Halibut. So, I don't know what this day is going to entail. Um, hopefully nothing to do with weird fishes flying banners in front of the aquarium, in front of the ship. Morning, Harold. Hello, Professor. What did you think of that announcement? It was quite fantastically self-aggrandizing. Yes, it did go on a bit. The boy seems cool, though. Indeed. I'm sure it'll make a great source of distraction. Now, if you're quite ready... Sure. Um, ready for what? I made a breakthrough discovery at the Arboretum last night. You remember the last batch of bloomy rocks? Oh, the really small ones from the last intake? The ones with the strange shapes and the little holes and... The blue ones, yes. Turns out their surface composition doesn't just give us clues about our immediate aquatic environs. I think they've picked up some influences from outer space as well. Take a look through the microscope. You'll see what I mean. Just remind me exactly how that thing works again. Harold, are you fooling me? This will be the last time I explain it to you, so for once, pay attention. You need to open the hatch first. Now, activate the switch next to the bore to open the sample shelf. Okay, let me uh, figure out how to do that. <laughs> I understand they need a way, like a segue, to explain how things work, but uh, really makes Harold look kind of stupid. Okay, she's talking about this thing. The rock you want is in the container on the lower right. You remember your left and right? Bring it. Check the microscope, and finally, you'll see what I mean. The one you're looking at now seems to have picked up radiation from our nearest sun. There's a particular mark for each time there's been a solar flare. I can only see one mark? That's the problem. There isn't enough of a recording on this one. I dated it to roughly 40 BC. So we need an older one. For... Exactly. Older ones, ideally. Although I doubt we'll have much luck catching more of them by chance. Oh, yes. We have to figure out when there's going to be a gap between flares. Flares cause the solar winds. A gap between solar storms is our only window for leaving this place. I need you to look into this, Harold. If anyone on board has an older rock, we need it procured. Yes? But if we're not going to be able to catch one, where am I supposed to start looking? You could start at Tommy's store. You and I both know that guy somehow gets hold of whatever those filter stations spit out, and then sells them at an outrageous markup. Good evening, Jean. Nice to see you, Bridget. Is the sample in the microscope? I'm really curious to inspect it. Yes, you definitely should. Don't let her look at it. <laughs> Hey, you're the professor's assistant, Jeremy, right? Um, yes, but no. I'm Harold Halibut. I interned in your section for about a year. Oh, goodness, you're microwave boy. So, you do remember me. Yes, how could I forget that debacle? Actually, I've just met with your professor. Is everything okay? Not entirely, but I probably shouldn't be telling you. Okay, I'll... But I suppose if Moreau trusts you... I'm a bit worried about our ship's energy reserves. I thought I'd talk to your boss about it. She's the smartest person on board, isn't she? Reserves? Reserves? Are we in some kind of trouble? Now I've said too much. Ask Moreau. Perhaps she'll tell you more. Did you guys talk about the Bloomy Rocks at all? Moreau said I should maybe check with your husband. As a matter of fact, we did. As for my husband, you'll have to ask him. 
which is more than I've been able to do the past few days. Knowing that infuriating rock collection, I'm sure he'll find you something. He's a sweetheart, really, you know? Go ask him. See you later. Bye, Richard. Richard. So... Dare I ask, what is it? Um, what needs doing again? Harold, use the PDA. Anything else on your mind? So, Bridget told me about some kind of energy shortage and to ask you about it. Any idea what she meant? Hmm. Yes, she mentioned she may have found a link between something in the water and our solar wind problem. It's speculative, and now isn't the time. That all? Oh, no, it's okay. I'll be off. Be good, Harold. Okay. The reason I was, like, skeptical of letting her look at that microscope thing is because when we were talking with Cyrus, um, he was talking about how the fish said, um... Harold, when you see Cyrus, could you give him a message for me? Sure thing, Professor. Just ask him, how are the details coming along? Okay, I will ask him, but, um... Yes, yes, I know. I could ask him myself, uh, but didn't you stop to wonder why I don't want to? I just did stop to wonder. It's complicated, okay? We go back a long way and don't always see eye to eye, especially on matters of categorization, nomenclature, and subsequent archiving methodology. Not that he ever saw fit to delineate his preferred... Uh, don't mind me, Harold. I just mean, Cyrus has his stubborn phases, and I just can't talk to him when he's in one. Okay, say no more. Your message is safe with me. Actually, Harold, no, it's okay. Nothing. Run along now. Uh, Moreau being a little bit weird. Um, but no, I was saying, like, the fish said, or they had a banner that was, like, trying to tell us that, you know, the ship could take off at any time. Um, so I suspect like they're they're keeping us down here for some reason, some political money Our reason. Our family has been in the plantain business here on the Fedora for generations. You know you I want know some of that toasty down. golden delight with your dinner or lunch or breakfast, especially plantains and. Yeah, we're not gonna sit here and watch TV. <laughs> we'll handpick just the right plantains with you. Plantain planet. It's not a banana. It's plantain. <laughs> you know plants give us that clean air we like to breathe. Okay. All right. So we got to talk to Cyrus and also find this blue rock. Okay. Mm, let's go downstairs and talk to Cyrus first. I don't know what she was mean, like, uh, Cyrus and Moreau go way back. I don't know what she means by that, like, just like, the old school buddies. She seems a little bit older than him, but... Okay, he's not here. I don't think I can go down there to the observatory. if my PDA gives me any sort of direction of where I need to be going. Okay. So if he's not in his little plant room, hopefully we'll meet him along the way somewhere. Before we hop on this thing, let me check this. He's at the energy dist district and Tommy's general store at the 
Gora Arcades. Okay. Let's go to the Agora Arcades first if we can. Not sure if we can look at that map. Maybe we can zoom in. No, it doesn't do anything. Okay. Destination selected. Have a pleasant journey and a fantastic day. You may now exit the tube. Utterly Thank unconcerned you for your own safety, no respect for authority, wanton disregard for the future of humanity. Harold! Good timing. You can explain things to the Major, can't you? Harold, come here and explain things. And yourself. Major, I'm just passing through. I really don't know what this is about. Hi, Felix. So you're not here to make excuses for this diminutive delinquent? Hey, I'm not diminutive. I've just got longer to live than you. And Harold, tell him about our plan. Harold! I thought I told you to stay out of trouble. I should have known you'd be wrapped up in this. I'm not in trouble. There is no plan. Are you questioning my authority and or organizational merit? What? No, Major, I... If I find out you're a bad influence on young Felix here... Not me, Major. Whatever Felix did, I'm sure it was meant innocently. And how would you know about that? Unless you're in league with him. I just meant... I mean, if you just relax. Relax? Harold, you're really starting to tweak my beak. Uh, but, but, what did Felix do anyway? Utterly unconcerned for his own safety, no respect for authority, wanton disregard. Anyway, Major, under whose jurisdiction is Harold in trouble? Mine! I'm the law here. Felix, will you be a witness to this? Absolutely. And can you testify to Harold's involvement? Only if he's willing to testify to mine. Harold, tell the truth now. It'll be easier in the long run. I haven't witnessed anything to testify. Damn it! Then the case is in danger of falling apart. I'm sure Felix's parents will deal with this. Good point. They should really be present while you question me, Major. I'm only a minor. Don't you throw the book at me, son. Where are they anyway? I don't know. And... Good luck finding them! Oh no, Felix, have you lost them? Harold, leave this to the professionals. Felix, do you mean to tell me you've neglected to file a missing person or persons report? Shouldn't we look for them? Don't change the subject. But, Major, what is the subject? That's right, Harold. Know your rights. If, and I mean if, you're acting as some kind of heroic big brother figure to this young man, I expect you to be a positive influence. I, we... There's no... Come on, spit it out, man! Just leave me alone, Sandstrom. I've got fish to feed. Okay, Harold, but your fish won't save you if I catch you red-handed. Now, Felix! Where is Felix? Oh, no. Felix? Harold, you've lost him! Ugh. This major dude only has one mood. Okay. Hmm, sure. Hello, Mr. Secretary. Uh, eight, right? I'm afraid not. You must be thinking of my brother, Secretary Eight. Or Secretary 24, of course. Oh, sorry. I always get that mixed up. There are just three of you, right? Well, now, uh, three of us work for Old Water, yes. Oh, so there's another who doesn't? Hmm, yes, Secretary Eight is the man to ask about that. He remembers it all much better than I do. Remembers? Okay. Sounds serious. Anyway, I'm neglecting my post. Welcome to the Agora Arcades. Would you like to partake in the monthly all-water raffle bonanza? Oh, sure. Wait, is it free to enter? Certainly. The raffle is a generous gesture of frivolity from all-water to you, the citizens of Fedora. Hmm, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. I'll just spin her up. Drum roll, please. And... Looks like you were unlucky this time, but that's life. Try again next month. Okay. 
cool. Well, at least we got another task. Slippy Jr. What's he messaging me for? Okay. It's closed. There's the blue rock. There's the blue rock. The bane of my day. Where's Tommy when you need him? Okay. There's the blue rock. The bane of my day. I didn't mean to Where's that. Tommy when you need him? If we should go around looking for Tommy, but we'll talk to this dude. Oh, oh, not. Hey, how is it going, Harold? Not too shabby, thanks. How about you? I'm super, actually. I found a book. Oh, cool. What kind of book? It was just discovered. A book written on Earth. Nobody on the station has read it yet. Apart from me. Wow, what's it about? Stick around and you'll find out. My newest performance piece is a reading of it. Oh, nice. Which part? All of it, Harold. All of it. Without interruption. It's gonna be a wild ride, so buckle up. Wow, okay. Good luck. Hey, buddy. Hey, Harold. Great to see you. How about that announcement, eh? Yeah, it was really something. It sure was. I try not to busy myself with those kinds of affairs. I'm just happy you're joining in for the station jog. The jog? Uh, I was only... Chris promised me he'd be here any minute. Now we've really got a jog team on our hands. I think I'll pass. No one's forcing you, Harold. But why don't you keep me company until Chris arrives? Okay, that I can do. How's the post today? Ah, oh, Not working makes me so restless. I hope it's back soon. Good thing you had the arcades oh, to I can jungle. skip through this. Yep. And Chris can't get to the school for the same reason. So at least that young man is almost as fit as me. Why do I feel like I'm the odd one out? Oh, hey, Chris. Last to arrive, first to finish. That's my motto. Harold, won't you stay? The jog team won't be the same without you. Chris is never yeah, dressed. Yeah, Harold. You can't leave now. I just got here. Jog team, jog team, jog team. Nah, we're gonna, um, we're gonna go for a race. Okay. Go jog team. <laughs> Come on, Harold. Keep up. Dang. Guys. I can't move Guys. any faster. Okay, I don't think it's an actual mission. <laughs> I thought I was Oh my gosh. <laughs> Pace yourself, lads. The job must go on. Go on. Without me. Good show, Harold. How's everyone feeling? I think that was a new personal best for me. Fine. Fine. Thanks, buddy. How'd you both keep so fit? Oh, you know me, Harold. I've been running around this station for years. Gotta keep up my reputation for same-day service after all. Healthy body, healthy mind. That's what keeps me going. Gotta set a good example for those lazy students of mine, too. <laughs> Have you got any tips? Just keep on moving, Harold. You never know when you'll have to slow down. So keep going while you can. Cool. <laughs> Alright. Um, I don't really want to go in and talk to everybody to try and find this dude. Um, maybe my PDA is updated. Okay. Alright. 
so let's see if we can find this dude here before we leave. Mm, this doesn't look like him. No, I don't want to play the game. Wait. Okay, this is pretty fun. Okay, that's it. We have we have business to attend to. Maybe he's up here. There's a very weird looking statue. Is this person alive? Person at the table? I can't interact with them. Let's see if I can get any information from this guy. Did I break the game? Hello. Okay, there it is. Hey, man. <laughs> Welcome to the fish fish hut. Sample our homegrown fedora fish or our freshwater catch of the day. What's the catch of the day today? Today, we have the great spotted super grouper. That sounds tasty. Uh, just out of interest, is that a native fish? That's to tell, man. You know, a few of the ship's fish escaped during the crash. So we don't know if they thrive in the ocean, or even intermingle with native species. But, we can guarantee that fresh super grouper taste you know and love. Cool. <laughs> Alright, I don't think I saw anybody up here on this side. Yeah, no. Okay. You're cool, so be cool all of the time with my patented Consta Cool fabrics. So you see, that's the slippy difference. And if you just watch this exciting infomercial, ah, Harold, if it isn't my favorite multi maintenance man. Wait, are you sure I can't interest you in. Oh, never mind. Hello, how's business? You're an everyman, right? I've made a new ad, and I need your opinion. I mean, I think it's great, but maybe it's too high concept. Oh, well, I'm not really qualified to... Nonsense! Just watch! I was trying to read a book in the comfort of my own home, but my own home wasn't comfortable. It was too hot to concentrate. Will I ever be able to read to my children? or enjoy the adventures of the Fedora 4 from my armchair again. Why, yes, of course you will. With my patented, tried and tested aircon system, you'll always be able to keep your brain, books, and body sweat free and as cool as Jimson Jameson himself. Please note, Slippy's aircon system is not officially endorsed by the creators of the Fedora 4 or their likenesses. Burr. Sometimes I just can't get cozy. How's a man supposed to look after his family with cold arms? My family are depending on me. What am I going to do? Clad yourself in one of our triple insulating cozy jackets and matching thermal underwear, of course. You know what they say, warm hands, warm hearts. Slippies means heritage. I'm the latest in a long tradition of winter sports enthusiasts. Slipmires throughout history have kept everyone from royalty to the common man warm and cozy in their pursuits of the great outdoors. Slippies means social responsibility. The Schlipmeyers were one of the most generous sponsors of the Fedora One Project. 
giving back to the people, sharing their knowledge of insulation technologies and considerable wealth to keep humanity warm and cozy among the stars. Remember, you deserve to live and work at whatever temperature is right for you. With over 200 years of expertise, you can bet the weather forecast shows slippies across the board. Come in out of the cold and into slippies. Slippies, heat protection so good, it'll be a cold day in hell. What? Well, what did you think? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's how I feel at this point. Um, it was, there were lots of things, and... Uh, Great, so glad you agree. And while you're here... I was just going... Ah, oh, come on, you can't go without testing my new half-pipe experience. It's new and improved by a little modification to my patented aircon system that I'm calling the freezer. Is that... do I have to... I'm glad you asked. It combines precise atmospheric condition synthesis with the ski sim to recreate the most lifelike experience of skiing you can dream of. That sounds... uh, wait. Me? Skiing? But I don't... Nonsense. I'm Harold's sure you're a natural. This. Now let's get you strapped in. Just gotta teach Harold how to pizza. Pizza the skis down the hill. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. You were really blown away by it, huh? That was weird. First time's the hardest. It's all downhill from there. <laughs> I guess I'm slippy by name, but you're slippy by nature. <laughs> I guess so. I'd really better go now. Sure, sure. But just so you know, I run a pretty generous referral scheme, if you're interested. For every customer you get. Got a dash. Okay, Harold. Be skiing ya. <laughs> okay. So we've talked to pretty much Tim, everybody. What do you think about the announcement then? I think it sounds exciting, Alon. You think everything sounds exciting? Hopefully, well, this is the story I. Hey, Tommy. Okay. I don't suppose you'll be back in the shop soon. Oh. Or I mean, I can come back later. Oh no! What do you need? It's just that the professor and I need some sea rocks. I mean, filter rocks from older times that have come from the filters and i feel like you might have one Shh, quiet don't be mentioning filter frankie you know that every piece of my inventory is legally obtained or or legally found right right sure that's why i'm here to legally acquire an item of yours that you may have okay look and listen here longy long pants i shut the store for a reason pants. you know oh man i'm sorry I didn't mean to call you Longy Long Pants just then. <laughs> you sure you don't want me to come back another time? It's fine. I'm just feeling sorry for myself. I've got this gut feeling that my beautiful angel wife don't care about me no more. Oh, no, Tommy. No, I know I'm oversharing again. Tommy, you gotta stop oversharing. Look, kid, either way, I'm not gonna be of any help to you today. Ah, uh, if you're sure. Yeah, you just caught me on a blue note, that's all. She's been spending so much time with that beautiful chunk of marble. You know, the guy in the silk robe and the flowing locks? Uh oh, not Chris. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. Chris, don't be cheating. Tommy's wife. That would be bad. Okay. So, I thought maybe I misheard. It sounded like he was going to open for us, but let me check the PDA. Tommy refuses to open up the general store because of his relationship stuff. Okay, maybe I should go to the energy district and see if there's anything I can help with her there. Okay. So let's go let's go check on her.
got a message from Moreau. Destination determined. Now, relax with all water. Still I'm not exactly clear on how these transportation tubes work. Please submit to a gentle disinfecting. Okay, Close cool. your eyes. Oh no. Can I not get in there? Oh, there's Bridget. And Chris? What are they doing in there? I can't hear them, but maybe I can lip read. Hmm, seems like Bridget is pretty excited about something. It looks like she's saying... <laughs> oh no. It's unacceptable. Tommy would realize. It's just not worth the risk. Ooh, Chris is replying. Let's see. This is, you should not go based off of lip reading. Maybe you're right. It could go so wrong. Anyway, we should get back before people notice. Hmm, pretty mysterious. Now I wish I'd never skipped those lip reading classes. <laughs> Okay. So now, okay, we got to go back to Tommy. Welcome. Gentle disinfecting. Close your eyes. Location nominated. Journey commencing. All water. All this to get a blue rock to figure out if we can go home. But what does it matter if we can go home if Tommy can't Thank be with his wife, Bridget? All water. Am I right? Hopefully Tommy's not throwing him back. What do you know about Filter Frankie? Filter Frankie? I'm I'm sorry to bother you again, but I went looking for Mrs. Vandervart, and she was at the harvest office. Non news. It's her office. Where else would she be? I know, but it's more who was there with her that I thought you know I should mention. What? Who is she with? It looked totally professional. I didn't see anything bad. Why is just Senor Tinnerbaum. Ah, uh, what? What's he doing in her office? There's no way he knows enough about energy. If I still had my own hair, it would never have come to this. Tommy, I'm sure it's not like that. Why would Harold just, you don't just understand, spill Harold. this information? It's like to get old. But I'll be damned if I'm gonna take this lying down. Tommy, I don't think you should uh, get angry. And you're in on this with me now, Harold. You did the right thing bringing this to me. I'm really sure it's nothing, just a lunch chat. I've just been so busy working on this damned store sign, thinking Bridget would love the ambition, you know? See me as a real go-getter again. But maybe this whole time I should have been showing her signs of my love. I'll yeah, bet you're she right, knows Tommy. You you're absolutely right. We'll modify the sign. Tonight. Make it into a great big sparkly neon proclamation of my... Nay, our love. A sign she won't be able to miss. A sign to blind that glossy maned Casanova. I mean, I'm not sure that's the sign. Don't doubt it, Harold. This is gonna work. I just feel it. You're in, right? Will you help me save our love? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll try. Knew I could count on you. Let's get to work. Wow. Tommy almost had a good point there for a second. Talking about giving his wife meaningful love and attention. But then he went right back to the sign. So. I'm gonna go freshen up a little. 
Might even put on a different outfit now that I think of it. Will you go and look for Bridget for me? Mm. My dear Bridget, I'm sorry we haven't been able to spend much time together recently. So I get how you might be attracted to the man-machine with the flowing looks of an angel that you call <laughs> your friend. But I do beg you to give me another chance. Please, Bridget, will you let me back into your heart and take this monument to our love as a sign of my great affection? Tommy, of course I love you, and I would never betray you. I just wanted to give you some space. I saw you working so hard on your new sign, and I just wasn't allowed to tell you. Couldn't tell me what? Oh, what the heck. The ship's facing some issues with the energy budget. I knew you would need a lot of light for your sign, and I just wasn't allowed to tell you. Ha! No way we've got an energy problem here. Uh-oh. That was it? No helping Tinner Bomb with his spray tan? That was it. No spray tan. I'm so sorry, Buttercupsy. Buttercupsy. I love you. I love you. Good hug. Good decision, animators, not to go for the kiss. <laughs> thank you for your help, Harold. I was hoping you'd accept this stone as a thank you. Yes. Ah! Oh. oh, no. Moreau won't be happy to hear about this. How could this happen? All right, well, we'll, we will have to investigate this rock mystery uh, next time. So, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Um, hope you're enjoying this, and uh, be on the lookout for the next episode of Harold Halibut. Bye.